Hi, welcome back, everybody. We're here at the Cassandra Summit 2012, live from Santa Clara at the Hyatt. I'm Jeff Kelly, lead big data analyst with Wikibon. Uh, our next guest, uh, Ben Connors, worldwide head of alliances for Jaspersoft. Uh, Jaspersoft, as you know, open source uh, business intelligence, reporting, and analytics company. Uh, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Great, thanks for having me. Really enjoy being here. Great, so, well, why don't we just start talking a little bit about what Jaspersoft is doing with, uh, you know, doing here in the, in, the, in, a big data, in the big data world, and I know you've got an announcement this morning with Datastack, so talk, talk a little bit about kind of how, you, how BI fits in with uh, kind of the, the big data world. Great, be happy to. So, <clears throat> uh, Jaspersoft, as you know, is, as you mentioned, an open source uh, business intelligence company. We do reporting, analytics, dashboards mm -hmm. from a variety of databases. Uh, we started from the relational side, but we've been making a big push now into big data. Um, the uh, announcement this morning is the, the latest in a, uh, in a chain. We're really excited to be working with Datastax. We see that they have a uh, uh, great team, great product, great in, uh, ecosystem, mm -hmm. um, lots of uh, customers, er everything's going uh, really up and to the right, so, so that's really strong. Um, the reason that we're, we're focusing a lot in the big data space with, uh, with uh, Datastax and, and others is because we believe really the, the value of the big data is not in you know, the traditional three Ds, or the velocity, yep. the variety, and the volume of, mm -hmm. of data, but it's really the time to insight. It's the value, the, the fourth V, the value that you get from that big data. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to bring to the, the party, and that's what Cassandra does really well, because mm -hmm. as you know, they are a uh, very high volume, but very low latency uh, mm -hmm. data source, and that uh, plays very well to our strategy of low latency reporting and analytics. Mm -hmm. So they have the idea of uh, it's as close to real time as you can get. Uh, some of these other big data platforms are more batch oriented, not, not quite as real time low latency. So, so Cassandra sounds like it's a, as a data source for Jaspersoft, it's something that can really support more of the real time. Exactly, yeah, they have a, a focus on low latency or near real time as do we, and so mm -hmm. it makes for a very, uh, very mm -hmm. close fit. Right, so you mentioned you know, you're, you're as, as most BI companies, kind of start in the relational world, connecting to a central data warehouse, uh, running reports, providing some level of kind of interactive analytics. Uh, talk to me about as you know, we transition to this big data world, I mean certainly relational databases aren't going away, um, but we're going to see more, more and more big data sources come online, and that means BI companies and BI technology now has to shift to be able to support these uh, kind of NoSQL, uh, non-relational tools, uh, more data sources. So what are the challenges associated with doing that? Uh, adapting traditional BI that was built in that kind of relational centralized data warehouse world to a big data world? Yeah, so great question. Um, it actually, uh, uh, maybe by fortunate coincidence, uh, uh, fits in very well with something that, that we did a while ago, and that was we built, uh, we're open source, mm -hmm. and so we're completely open, we publish all our APIs, including uh, custom data sources, custom, custom connectors. We did that before the days of big data, but as it turns out, that fits perfectly into what big data requires, because as you know, these are multi-structured, uh, mm -hmm. unstructured, multi-structured uh, data sources. And so we, we use that underlying architecture to build our various connectors, including uh, uh, originally to, uh, curiously, to Cassandra using their APIs. And as mm -hmm. you know, they've now gone to Cassandra query language, C CQL, uh, Datastax is fully supporting that with not only the the, uh, the data itself, but also through the solar interface, as, mm -hmm. as you know, for search. So we support all of that. Now, the interesting thing for this intelligence to your question is that uh, uh, traditionally companies weren't, weren't thinking in those dimensions, and right. so they're married to SQL. And what that means is you have to try to figure out how to make whatever you have in front of you fit SQL. <laughs> um, and people do that through, for example, ETL, mm -hmm. taking whatever the big data is and trying to push it into a relational data source. Mm -hmm. Well, that has its challenges in terms of latency, in terms of volume, in terms of all the things that big data does very well, which is why people invented big data to begin with. <laughs> right. um, or they, they try to use uh, uh, traditional uh, SQL approaches and uh, that leads to some things like, for example, in the Hadoop world, using Hive as, mm -hmm. a, uh, as a connector, which uh, is fine, but again, that's a batch-oriented approach, as you, right. as you alluded to earlier. So um, uh, what, what we're doing and what we think is the, the way for BI to, 
to effectively address these big data sources is to go natively to them and mm -hmm. go directly to them for the near real-time analytics and the flexibility of the, uh, and the power of the mm -hmm. underlying database. Uh, so maybe could you walk us through one or two kind of use cases, specifically of JasperSoft uh, working against Cassandra, and what kind of you know what are the, the most popular use cases you're seeing? What are you hearing from customers? How are the how are your two technologies really going to work uh, practically speaking? What are the what are the real value? Where do you bring the real value? Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, uh, some typical use cases are for things like uh, log analysis, mm -hmm. um, things like uh, gaming applications uh, where, where people want to see uh, from you know, many, many thousands of users and how they're tweaking the game and what that's meaning to, mm -hmm. uh, to their, their use, so mm -hmm. forth, whatever. And what we help to provide is uh, uh, insights into that by uh, visualizing, digesting, presenting the information in a meaningful way. So in that scenario, uh, a company might be using Cassandra to really to support their real-time gaming platform, and JasperSoft can kind of come in and help you understand that data as it's as it's being created, and you know exactly who's playing, how they're playing, what are maybe some bottlenecks, whatever whatever the case may be. Exactly. One one way I I like to think of it is we try to make big data small. <laughs> so by presenting it in a way, instead mm -hmm. of having this sea of information, you have a, a, a right. nicely packaged table or graph or dashboard mm -hmm. to reduce it all into something that we mere mortals can, <laughs> right. can digest. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that brings up another interesting point. So when you're actually trying to visualize and present big data, what kind of challenges does that uh, present in terms of versus smaller data sources where you kind of, you knew what you were looking for in a sense. Uh, with big data, you don't necessarily know what you're looking for. You want to do more ad hoc type type analysis, and it's not might not always be clear the best way to visualize so many data sources and all the different potential correlations you can draw between data sources. Um, so, so how does that impact kind of product development on your end and uh, actually building user interfaces that are in fact intuitive and easier easy to understand? Um, is it just the case? I mean, can you just take what uh, traditional BI and put it on top of big data, or is it, did it require a new way of thinking? It really does require a, a new way of thinking, and uh, the reason for that is, is several fold. Number one, being able to efficiently access the, the data sources mm -hmm. and, and take advantage of their uh, capability, but also it comes back, I think interestingly, to the, the near real-time latency aspect. And what I mean by that is, as you point out, when you have all this data and all, from all these different sources and all these different uh, 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 structures and formats and so forth, um, it can lend itself very nicely to iterative or live exploration. Mm -hmm. And that's what we facilitate very well. So as you point out, you look at it and you say, gee, uh, let's use a gaming example, mm -hmm. just as an example. Gee, you know, how, how's this game compared to that game? Well, that's interesting. I wonder if that's true in North America and Europe. No, mm -hmm. it looks like over in Europe, that game is a little more popular. Gee, why is that? You know, how does that compare by age demographics? Or you know, since we introduced that new you know weapon into the system or whatever. Mm -hmm. So one question leads to another. If you have to wait around again for latency, if you right. have to wait around till tomorrow to figure out what it is, it makes it a very cumbersome uh, tool, a very cumbersome analysis. When you have this near real time, you can operate more or less at the speed mm -hmm. of thought and and qu quickly uh, you know the creativity, the human mind can quickly uh, formulate new ways to think about it, new ways to look at it, and derive some interesting uh, interrogations that way. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, as we've talked about, you're, you're an open source company, and of course, uh, Cassandra, you know, got the, their vibrant open source community. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about how the two communities mesh, and how they, maybe how they're similar, how they're, how they're different, and, and what's it like trying to bring together two different communities like that? Uh, is there a lot of overlap? Um, what are the challenges in terms of uh, negotiating that kind of landscape? It, it, very complementary, very synergistic. Um, so as you, as you point out, uh, both companies have very similar business models. We have free versions of the product and then we have commercial mm -hmm. versions. Um, as you know, the, the open source model is, uh, or so-called freemium model, uh, typically uh, the vast majority of the, of the users uh, use it for free and they're happy to, to do that, and mm -hmm. the company's happy too because it seeds the market and gets more input into the product and so forth, whatever. Mm -hmm. People who do pay for the product in, in both cases are really paying for it for one or, or several of three reasons. Either professional support, um, the ability to uh, embed and resell the software in, in, in another product, or thirdly, for some premium features, some, mm -hmm. some extra lift. 
that's the DataStax model, that's the JasperSoft model, and so it, it really plays mm -hmm. very well together. Hmm, interesting. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of uh, the, the kind of uh, the use cases, you mentioned uh, we mentioned the gaming use case. Um, looking forward, where do you see this kind of going? Not just with Cassandra and DataStax, but in general, uh, how is BI going to evolve in this big data world? I mean, we talked a little bit about the technical challenges, um, but I mean, is, is BI going to be? Uh, are we not going to be able to recognize it compared to what it is today in five years from now when we're talking about where the term big data might not even exist, it's just a given, you've got all this data. Uh, wh what's this going to do to the BI industry? Okay, so what we see happening is uh, a trend towards what we consider uh, self-service BI mm -hmm. at scale. And what we mean by that is with all this big data and all these hidden messages, these, these uh, gems of information right. that are they're buried in there, more and more people are going to find value from that because you're collecting information that's mm -hmm. interesting to this group or that group or this function, that function, et cetera. Um, so what that means is you're going to want to be able to have easy to use BI tools that mm -hmm. will let the user reconfigure, resort, re-examine the information mm -hmm. in a way meaningful to them. So the days of static r reports, mm -hmm. are, I think, are going to fade from us as mm -hmm. we get to the point where you want to empower the users right. to see it in a way that makes their, their life easy, their, their insights faster, et cetera. Um, secondly is, I mentioned, uh, self-service BI at scale. The mm -hmm. at scale part is very interesting in a couple ways. Well, what it means is that you don't want to have, uh, again, you want to make the, the data available to lots of users in lots of ways, and things like uh, desktop BI, I think, are going are to fade because um, they're expensive and technically it's hard to, to scale and, mm -hmm. and support large user communities. Big data, I think, is going to lead to big user communities and mm -hmm. that's where you want both the technical and economic models, financial models, that make BI able to serve hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of users. And then I think that will be the trends we'll, we'll be seeing is uh, empowering the users to do more of the self-service uh, mm -hmm. analytics and having a technical and financial model that makes it feasible to put it in the hands of all those people. Well, let's dig into that a little bit. That, what will that technical and financial model look like? So technically what it means is that you want to have uh, easy to use uh, web-based tools, don't require the, the desktop installation. Right. It means you want to have them uh, in, intuitive and, and flexible uh, and secure to be able to put in the hands of so many users and let them uh, uh, sort and filter the data. It means you want to support lots of, of end user platforms, not only uh, desktop, but, but web and even mobile. Mm -hmm. And Definitely. for example, uh, JasperSoft, we now support uh, the, uh, the Apple iPhone, the iPad, and Android.